The Watcher, John Graff vs. John List, The True Story Within the Netflix show The Watcher, we saw John Graff as a main person of interest in the show's depiction of true events that occurred surrounding the letters that were being sent to the house. However, John Graff as an individual was somebody who didn't actually exist in the case, nor was he ever a suspect. But one thing for certain is that John Graff was based off of a criminal that once lived in Westfield, New Jersey. So with that, I thought I'd break down the character, the crimes that the real John List committed, and see if and how much this character was based off of the true person. So let's get into it. Here is the watcher John Graff vs. John List, the true story. Just to let you know, this video will contain spoilers. Within episode 3 of the show, we were introduced to the character John Graff, who was an individual who previously owned the property at 657 Boulevard that was receiving the letters. He immediately painted himself out to be a creepy individual when he was conversing with Dean Brannock, but it was only later on in the episode when Dean was speaking with Theodora that she informed him that there was an individual that used to reside in the house that was called John Graff. And now he was on the run for murdering his entire family after he was seen to be receiving letters as well. Whilst his incorporation in the Netflix show was fictitious, and there wasn't actually a real person that was called John Graff that once resided in the house, in real life there was an individual named John List who lived in the same neighbourhood and only a six minute drive away. It seems as though the creators of the show wanted to merge the two tragic stories in the neighborhood together in order to maximize the fear factor that the show could have and add an extra layer to the story. In truth, the events that we saw John Graff do were inspired by what John List actually did in real life just six minutes up the road, and they were loosely based off of it. For example, John List, whilst not moving into 657 Boulevard, he instead moved into a 19-bedroom mansion with his wife, children, and his mother like we saw depicted in the show. John List killed his wife and his mother in the same way that the show depicted. Then once his daughter and one of his other sons got home from school, he killed them too. Then, after that, he made himself some lunch like we saw in the Netflix show, and he then drove to watch his son's soccer game. However, in the series, it was basketball. And then once they returned home, he also killed him. List proceeded to close his mother and wife's bank accounts, which is why I feel we saw a subtle reference to John Graff in a bank in the show. As well, List also was taking money from his mother's bank account too, in order to pay for the mortgage after he lost his job. Two things that we also saw on Netflix. Following the murders taking place, List proceeded to evade authorities and start up a new life. And he even married a new individual where he lived under the alias of Robert, but he said that he was known as Bob. Which is why I feel we saw John Graff get introduced as William, but he stated how he was referred to as Bill, as it showed that this story was mirroring the life of John List and had a new identity too. His reason for killing his family was that he suffered from obsessive compulsive disorder and he saw too much evil in the world, and killed them so he'd be able to save their souls. Like we saw in the show, List cut himself out of all of the family photos that were present, and at the crime scene he lied all of his family members down so they were visible upon entry. This was other than his mother. The family members weren't found for some time in the show, which is what actually occurred in real life. List stopped the mail, newspapers, and other regular deliveries from arriving, and he also informed their schools that they were visiting a family member so there was no need for them to contact them. Whilst John List had two sons and a daughter, we saw Graf had one of each. His wife Helen in real life was somebody who had become an alcoholic. And in the show, we saw that Graf's wife had become relatively unstable due to the alcohol that she was consuming. I found it quite interesting that they decided to incorporate this completely separate story into the real life events of The Watcher. I feel as though they did it so they could tell two haunting real life events that occurred from a neighborhood that otherwise doesn't really have many crimes occurring. John Graff, whilst it not being upfront and clear in telling us that it was based off of John List and the crimes that he committed, it's clear to see that it was most certainly the case. The appearance, the fact that the family members lived there along with his mother, the new identity that he was living under, along with many of the other things that have been mentioned, it was a haunting inclusion. Graff was a character that embodied evil and I feel represented List in a way that history most likely remembers him. So, there you have it. The Watcher, John Graff vs. John List, The True Story. If you want to see more videos such as Endings Explained, Theories and Predictions, and Character Breakdowns, then click on the i button. Or alternatively, you can head over to my channel where you'll find them all. If you'd like to give me a show or movie that you'd like me to review, then head over to my Twitter, at BrainPilot underscore, 
and tweet me what show or movie you'd like me to review next. And finally, if you'd like to see what I rate the latest movies that don't quite make the cut to getting a dedicated video, then head over to my Letterboxd profile. It's where I rate the latest releases in real time. What did you think of The Watcher? Leave a comment down below, and don't forget to subscribe. I'll see you next time.